You're listening to the Finding Careers In podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, joined by Ricky Baez. Once again today, Ricky, how are you? I'm feeling the force today, Pete. Feeling the I force. See, I see that. You have Star Wars gear on. That's a very uh, a very That's specific right. look you're choosing to go with today. Well, it is. Right after this, I got to go have a meeting with a client, and she is a humongous Star Wars fan. I got to fit the part because we're going to get along great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there any risk that uh, you... You know, it, she may be a Star Trek fan and you got that wrong, in which case, is there any, is, you know how hilarious that would be? Because <laughs> you, because you, because you, you, you know, nerds in that area feel pretty passionate about your choice of one or the other, right? It's not like you can go back and forth. I got to tell you, Pete, if, uh, if I got there and she's like, ew. I don't think we're going to go past that conversation. <laughs> not going to like her anyway. No. Okay. I mean, how can we possibly get along if she hates Star Wars and she's a huge Star Trek fan? Because I don't like, I do not like Star Trek at all. Understood. Uh, well, let's uh, hope you got it right. And I hope so. Wish you the best. You can let us know the outcome next time we're together. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're going to talk about something different today, believe it or not, not Star Wars. Ah, we, come on. I'm, I'm gone. I'm leaving. That's, that's, we'll talk Star Wars later. <laughs> all right. Today, we're going to talk about the signs of uh, when it's time to look for a new job. What are the warning signs that employees should work for? That's a topic that um, mm. all comes up in, in almost everyone's career at some point. It does. And it, it's, I think people are more, are more bold in their decision to decide to jump ship or stay, or stay on a ship um, post-pandemic. Right? Pre-pandemic, I don't think any... I, 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 I would venture to guess the amount of people who would jump ship because of these things would be was less than the pandemic than after the pandemic, because now we have other choices. So this is important to know for people out there, for business leaders and 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 organiz and even people looking for a job to know what are some of the signs to say, I am done with this. This is not good for my mental health or financial health. I got to go somewhere else. So this is a great list. So I want to make sure uh, I understand what you're saying, that people are more prone to jump quickly now than pre pre COVID. I think so. I believe so. Why, why is that? Because I think it's, I, I know there, there were some people before the pandemic who were thinking about jumping ship to go somewhere else, whether it's to go to a different job, whether to just venture out on their own and start their own thing or just enter the gig economy. And they, they were afraid to do it because those waters were not as tested as they felt comfortable with. Come pandemic, they kind of got pushed into those waters and you either sank or you swam. And people learned that they can swim. And I and, and now with all of these success stories out there with the gig economy and how the pandemic sparked a brand new industry, I really think people have the the nerve now more to jump ship than before. I really do. Um, I agree with you. I think there was a lot of that happening a year ago. So we're recording this in August 2023. Uh, now the pendulum has started to swing back. I yeah. think for the past six months, it's it's gone to no longer be such a strong employees market. And so yeah. there may be more hesitation now than there was this time a year ago. And rightfully so. Companies aren't hiring as quickly. You know, there was you know, the pendulum has just had such big swings in, in the space over the past three years. I think it's settling, but still a weird time in the market still companies aren't hiring at the pace they were what under what i would consider to be normal circumstances of the time of my professional life which mm -hmm. is a little over 25 years now so i you know this is this is a weird time but the the message today more than anything else is don't stay in a bad situation that's right it, identifying what a bad situation is is very personal, but there are some warning signs that are universal, and that's what we'll talk about today. And you know, create almost a checklist of sorts for anyone who is asking the question: Is this a good time to leave? Right? Mm -hmm. Should I consider now? There's an old saying, and it, it probably applies to a lot of different aspects of life, that uh, is effectively: Don't run away from something; run to something. So That's I right. want to keep that in mind as well with this conversation. While we're talking about reasons to to leave, um, the best reason of all to leave is because you f have something better to go to. That is the goal. And so one thing that I'll you know caveat up front is understand. You know, don't let your emotions take over. Don't mm -hmm. don't leave without thinking it out. So 
uh, listen to this podcast, listen to the, the things we're going to talk about, consider how they apply in your own situation, and then put together a plan. But to the, you know, the best degree possible, have a plan for what you're going to do next yep. versus just, hey, I need to get out of here. You said something really interesting there, Pete. You said, consider how this applies to your situation. This is a list that it, it, it's it's not all encompassing, but some things do apply to you, some things do not. What I want people to, to think about is if you're planning on jumping ship because of any of the things you hear today, please, please be cognizant of the fact that what if some of these things that you're running away from, you find them where you're running to? Right. So what are the things that are really, really crosses the line for you for you to say this is enough? Because, look, the grass isn't necessarily greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. So you have to decide where where it is you want to be, because some of these things you're going to find elsewhere. Right. So let, let's let's let, let, let's let's kick it off real quick. If if it's OK with you, Pete. Oh, right? uh, yeah, if, uh, that's so a let's great do this. Point. I'm glad you made it. Yeah. What about if your work isn't recognized? So if you go to work and your work is not recognized, right? Go ahead. Well, there's just so much meaning behind that. Yeah. It, it, oh, it's how does that make you feel? That's that's a big thing with, I think, younger professionals today is is attach feelings and emotions to their job in a way that my generation did not um, mm -hmm. and still does not, right? Uh, it, where I don't, um, I, I tend to separate that a lot my job from my emotions as best as I can. Uh, today, that's not uh, that's not prevalent, uh, I don't think, or it's becoming less so. Um, so there's multiple reasons for the your work not being recognized to be a problem. That's how it's going to make you feel to the point of mm -hmm. being you know, just dissatisfied, unhappy, carrying on over to your personal life. But also, that's going to limit your ability to um, to advance, to succeed in an organization. So to me, that statement is a simple thing to say, but it, it has a pretty complex uh, message behind it. Now, can I can I say something from the opposite side, too? Because I've had some really good conversations with employees about these because they'll say they'll complain that their work isn't being recognized. And my 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 pushback to them. Now, now, this is from an HR perspective. My pushback to the employee was, what have you done to make sure your your work is noticed? Right. You have to be able to pat yourself in the back. You have to be able to toot your own horn, especially in a big organization. You cannot expect the leader of 5000 people to know what every single person is doing. So if you feel your work isn't being recognized before you jump ship. Make sure that you're doing everything you can to make sure your work is being noticed. Here's why. Because if you don't do that and you go somewhere else, you may be running to the same thing, right? It's if, 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 if you don't market yourself. So you've got, and this is hard for, for people who are introverts. It's really hard for them. And I recognize that. Guess what, folks? You got to step outside that box because you got to be recognized for it. And I'll tell you, this is something that uh, I would consider to be a weakness for me as a leader where I, as a career salesperson, that's how I always have thought of myself because that's how I made my living for so long. That's that's you know, what um, I brought to the table when I started my my business years ago. Is I'm going to be uh, my my work will uh, stand for itself in terms of uh, my compensation, right? That's what I. Uh, experienced as uh, in you know heavily leveraged compensation plans earlier in my career, where it's great if my boss says I'm doing a wonderful job, but if my numbers indicate otherwise, that's the real story. Conversely, if I'm making you know twice my base salary and commission because I've I'm at 150 percent of my comp plan as a salesperson. I didn't care whether my boss patted me on the back because the 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 reward that I was looking for the recognition was was in my paycheck. So so that's a good point. So so that is and that that's a mentality that uh, my career evolved you know, into. And as a leader now who realizes that that's not everyone's way of thinking. It's mm -hmm. been, as you know, as as you know, working uh, with me, uh, you know, on HR issues, 
that that's not my natural strength, far from it. And so I have to realize people seek recognition in different ways. And that's one of the reasons right. why uh, we we founded uh, 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 Zengig is, is when that realization finally took hold for me is that, you know what? It took me longer than it should have to real to just completely recognize not everyone thinks the way I do about that. And that's okay. So a lot of people do want to be acknowledged and feel the need to have the, that pat on the back or publicly be recognized that, that you they were doing a good uh, job. So we all seek it in different ways. Um, and now that I, I fully realize that and embrace it, uh, I think it's worth mentioning because you have to know what that means to you. So a simple sentence about recognition in your work, but very different meanings behind it. Absolutely. So you have to know what's important to you because that's a good point. What, what you said to me, what's important is my paycheck. I don't care if my boss likes it or not. If my paycheck is it's it's it reflects the work I've put in. That's awesome. So, folks, think about what you want to get out of it, because if it's being reported in your paycheck, technically you're good. Right. But if you want more than that, yeah, it's up to you. Well, and a lot of jobs don't, um, you know, whether you, and this is always an argument when it comes to um, the topic of something like quiet quitting, which we've we've discussed a lot, where it, if you're going to be paid the same, whether you put in a full solid eight hour day versus slacked uh, and, and goofed off half the day, um, that it's going to be hard to have motivation uh, in, yeah. in that as an employee. And so that recognition is going to need to come from somewhere else. If, if you, if it's not going to affect your paycheck and I would say that's most jobs that really, it's just happened to not be the job that I was in for uh, mo most of my career, how I've made my living. So one is directly tied to the other for, for me, but I think that's, that's, that's the minority. So let, let's move on to the, <laughs> the next one. Right. I acknowledge that now. Um, Got it. When your employer has crossed ethical boundaries, that's that's a big one, and one that I also uh, am hopeful to say that it doesn't happen too frequently. Right? I yeah. think generally most businesses try to do the right thing. Most individuals, you know, are are in trying to do the right things, but sometimes there's some there's some bad uh, some bad actors out there. Let's define that, though, right? Because it, it's ethical boundaries can be a lot of different things. Um, it, it's I'll give you a great example that I was involved with years and many moons ago What in what people thought was an ethical dilemma. And the issue was years ago, we had a um, a potluck where all this, all this, well, not potluck, but it's just a uh, a catered lunch for a bunch of people, right? We had a catered lunch. We bought um, uh, this barbecue joint down the street, and we had a lot of food left over couple of employees wanted to donate that to the homeless shelter and we're telling them we can't do that we cannot donate that to the homeless shelter. and we they thought we were heartless bastards but even when i told them i look if we donate this to the homeless shelter which don't get me wrong in my heart i believe we should i'm putting our organization and legal risk if somebody gets sick we're liable I have to look out for the best interest of the organization. And they thought I was heartless. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I have to think for the organization. Now, to them, that could have been an ethical boundary. And I don't know if that's enough for them to quit or not. But I know some people were thinking about quitting that day because of the conversation that I had with them. Well, the, you know, people, uh, you know, those these are emotional times, right, mm -hmm. that, that we're mm -hmm. in. And we're in a litigious society. We know that. Um, and so... That's a that's an interesting one. It, it depends. I could see that conversation headed it, it headed oh. that direction, um, and and you know I, maybe maybe people could could chalk that up right if they didn't like the way their employer you know, whether they were justified of this or not if, if your perceptions reality uh, didn't didn't like the way that played out. I've experienced it a number of times in in staffing. Uh, where people didn't, candidates didn't want to uh, consider working for a, the, a, a certain kind of business. It, uh, debt collection was one that I found odd. Um, a candidate that said, nope, I don't want to work for a debt collection company. I think that's a bad you know, uh, you know, industry. I don't want to be part of it. Okay. There was another time we had a prospect come to us. We didn't end up working with this company. They were in the adult film industry. They they were they were ran adult um, you know, video websites, and 
they, you know, that's just, we, that, there's a lot of people who wouldn't want to go work for a company like that. Right. I guess. <laughs> like, I think that's a given. So well, I, now are those ethical? But I mean, those are personal choices, per, you know, yeah. our personal morals, what we value, what we you know, are aligned, we're not uh, willing to, to uh, cross. Those are very personal things. So I think, you know, that coming into the organization. And like I said, we've had you know, those experiences and we have a choice to make. Um, but when I think of, you know, you see ethical boundaries cross, I think of legal issues you know, mm. as a company doing something they shouldn't do, or they, you know, consciously breaking the law um, or, you know, stealing, whatever it might be, you know, you know telling their, their customers something that they know is not true. Yeah. That happens all the time in business. Um, you know, it, it, I, I don't think, well, let me say this. I don't think it happens with most people, but it, the numbers dictate that it's going to still happen a lot. We we know that. So when you face that, um, that's a tough thing. I mean, I think that's a great reason to, to, to move on. Right. If you see the law being broken. Right? I mean, no, absolutely. And, and look, Pete, cause I don't want people to think I'm a heartless bastard out there. Uh, look, yes, we did not do the, uh, the, the food for the homeless thing, but we did donate a large chunk of money cause that's better. Right. It, it fulfills our social responsibility as an organization and we don't get anybody in trouble, but you're right. If, if this happens quite often and you have to make a decision, if you go home at night, if you go home at night, knowing your organization is doing this unethical thing, and if you cannot sleep at night, then that is a that is a good indicator that you might want to go somewhere else. And that goes well into, into our next point, Pete. Once you go to bed at night, you can't sleep, and you wake up the next morning, you realize your company's values don't align with yours. You have a decision to make. Well, and hopefully you can identify that in the interview process, like the stories I just told, uh, which mm -hmm. were a little premature, given that this is the next thing on our, our list. That's more in line with values not matching up um, yeah. because you, because of the industry, the organization is in, what they do for a living. Um, that That's going to happen a lot, or maybe it just isn't interesting to you, but try to identify that on the front. I'm trying to think of examples where that uh, comes up after someone's already employed, where they discovered, wow, this company doesn't really think the way I do. I mean, I, ideally, those those uh, kinds of things would come up, like I said, in, in I the interview you. process, pre-employment. Yeah, I could tell you, it, it's I see a lot of this happening when the when the interviewer just lied through their teeth, lied through their. It's just a great company to work for. Oh my God, everybody loves it. How's mm. it working with your leaders? Oh my God, they're the best leaders in the world. They can run Tesla. Right. All these things. And then you start working and you find that it's the exact opposite. And people quickly realize that in their first week, if it's really that night and day. But then some people stick it out because like we have no other choice. I can't find another job elsewhere. But you just became a stepping stone if you lied in your interview. Well, uh, right. So if that, if you discover that that had happened and once again, I'll say I don't think that happens a lot. I don't see an upside to companies being uh you know, dishonest about the interview during the interview process, knowing uh, the candidate's going to figure it out quickly. That just seems like a waste of everyone's time. Yeah. Um, I haven't encountered that much. I, I think it's more nuanced than that. When, when you know, as I'm starting to think of these scenarios um, where, wow, there's there's a lot of pressure. I didn't I didn't get that that or there was going to be so much pressure, or um, that uh, they. Yeah, they're they're workaholics, right? And boy, that's not really what I want. And I didn't yeah. pick up on that in the interview. Now, I think an employer should try to. One of my approaches in in hiring and and specifically in recruiting has always been, let me get all the bad out of the way. Let's start with that. Let's let's let if 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 I know when I'm recruiting for a client that um, the manager has is a really hard driver, has high expectations, really just you know. Not, not everyone is going to like working for that manager. I want to share that with the candidate early in the process Yep. because Agreed. you don't want these bad things coming out you know, at the end when everything otherwise looked good. So that is, I suspect, a common mistake because it, companies, you know, one, probably the biggest recruiting mistake that, that I see out there is this applies to staffing companies as well as you know, uh, end user companies who are hiring. They want to sell the candidate, right? You alluded to that earlier. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And 
no, 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 no. Talk the candidate out of it, right? It, because then you know that it's really a good match. If I only tell you the the good, it's like you know, you know, going on a um, you know on a on a date with someone for the first time. They're gonna put their best face on, or if you're on yeah. a, a dating platform, yeah. right? They're not putting the pictures of when they wake up in the morning. I assume, right? <laughs> I've never been on one. You know, had to use a dating pla- you know, uh, app. Um, that's going to be new trim Pete watch. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to make that's what I consider to be a safe assumption that people are putting their best foot forward. Right. Yeah. Let me see what you really look like. And yeah. then I'll decide, yeah. well, that's how you should approach a, um, you know, an interview process because it is kind of like a marriage, right? You don't get the chance to find out what they look like in the morning after you've been there, uh, you know, a, a week, you don't want to find that out after a week you, and, but there's also the reality that you never really know what someone's like until you live with them. That's another thing right. that I've thought. So I could do all the screening in the world, but the attempt should be there to say, here's where things may go wrong. If you, or we may not align the better job you do of putting those on the surface up front. Um, I think that's the way to go. So for everybody out there listening, I just want to, I just wanted to be clear. Pete just advocated that when you get married, there has to be a 90 day probationary period. That's what I got out of it. Did I? <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, I, I will say this. There, there are things no. that you don't, you don't know about someone until you, uh, you know, have the chance to, to, um, you know, to, to live with them. Listen, I've been married for 26 years. I, I love my wife dearly, but why she insists on moving things on my bathroom sink and letting hers, you know, look however she wants is, is a, is a mystery I'll never solve. <laughs> uh, oh, Pete, every guy listening to this right now said, Oh my God, me too. <laughs> apparently there's myself. rules, Ricky, that, that I know. Yet to figure out after 26 years, but look, that we know that's going to to happen in every scenario. So the the this is not the topic of what we're doing today, but the takeaway from this is, is I want everyone to know: try to avoid this on the front end. Yep. Right. Try to see, make sure you align in the interview process, and that applies to employees as well as employers. Um, so anything else on that one before we move yes, on? Yes. Yes. You used a good line because when um, you and I have had several conversations in the past about this guy that interviewed you in the past and flat out told you the bad part of it. This yep. job is seven to seven, all these hours. Are you OK with that? And you force them to self eject. And the people who stuck around, they know what to expect. So that's the best way to go out there. If you're an interviewer, if you're hiring authority, please make sure that you put out the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you're interviewing, and I want to know what you think about this, Pete. If you're the interviewer or the candidate, how do you feel about asking, hey, do you mind if I talk to three random people on my way out? Mm, how it. do you feel about that? Well, I think it's – um. <laughs> Depending on the situation, it may be odd. It may be awkward. It, it may be hard to to to, to do um, because you're still trying to get the job as a candidate, right? And so, if you decide that you're you're trying to take control, um, there's some risk associated with that. Yep. And, and so, I don't know that I give that advice universally. I like the concept. I, I like. I think as a candidate, do your own research is mm-hmm. should be part of the equation. And I don't mean getting on. Uh, an online review site where people you know go with their access to grind, right? That is not the, the yep. thing to do. But try to try to use your network to to get the real scoop. You know, and ask, right? Sort of like asking for a um uh you know a, 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 what is it called a referral or <laughs> you know if hey give me a reference, you know, who's yep. bought your product or services in the past. Can I yeah, I mean it's it'd be great. I just think for a lot of candidates, a lot of scenarios it's gonna be hard to pull off. Yeah, it would, especially on 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 the uh, on the interviewer side. Every organization has that one person that well, I don't want the candidates talking to. <laughs> right. Well, and chances too, are right? they'll get that person. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. okay. So okay. let me let's just close with this. I'm going to look in the camera directly and make sure I say this to any recruiter who's listening: rule candidates out. Don't talk them into a job. Find the bad on both sides, share it, bring it to the surface, and then. Once you do that, if everything still looks good, move forward, right? There but, go. but bad news early is good news that we know. So, gotcha. okay. Next one, you hit a career ceiling. Mm. You can't go anywhere. So here's my quick thought on that. 
you still have to stay long enough to get the benefit of being in the role. So I don't, I'm not an advocate for job hopping for that reason. You have to, if you say that you, um, you know, were a, uh, uh, this is a terrible analogy, but if you were a, a Sherpa, you know, on Mount Everest, uh, but you only lasted two days, right? I, I can't really give you credit for uh, death defying, you know, <laughs> incredible work and effort, right? But if you did that for two years, I, I suspect the ceiling is relatively low as a Sherpa on Mount mm -hmm. Everest, right? I mean, no pun intended on the height, but that um, that there's no there's no great advancement opportunities from from the, the Sherpa uh, profession. However, if you're going to if you're going to get the benefit of it on your resume and and not have it be a negative on you, you've got to stick it out for a certain period of time. Yep. So I know you've actually gone through the cycle dealt with the inevitable adversity of that that job uh, uh, brings with it and that you've overcome long enough to, um, you know, to get credit in my mind. That's right. It's look, it's now it depends on what you want. A lot of people out there, they, they don't want to get promoted. They just want to stay where they are. And that's it. It's perfectly okay. But if those of you who do want to get pr promoted before you jump ship, if you see that, that career ceiling, does your boss know about your ambition? Does your organization know what you want to do? Because if you don't communicate to them, right, maybe, maybe, maybe they thought we don't need this position now, that we don't need one extra position. Talk to them. Let them know what your ambitions are. Now, before you bring that up, you better make sure you're performing. Because let me tell you, if you're not performing, if you're on a pip, they, it's that, that conversation is, I'm going to be honest, it's going to fall in deaf ears. Because what I'm going to say is I'm happy for your ambition. I'm happy that you have this drive. Let's focus on your performance right now first, <laughs> and then we'll get there. So th this is an interesting, brings up an interesting point in something that I will tell you I, is an area I don't have great advice to give. It, it, I should, given my experience, but I don't on this particular space. And what I'm referring to is this. I've seen uh, clients when interviewing irrationally expect their candidates to commit to staying a long time. And I mean, indefinitely. And I, and, and I'm specifically thinking of some relatively low end positions, you know, early career positions, positions that you could expect a candidate would want to evolve out of right in advance from where if they hear, I eventually want to go to grad school for X, Y, Z, they would rule the candidate out. Um, on the other side, I've seen uh, employers rule out candidates uh, for not having showing enough ambition in their in their role. Wow, they were mm -hmm. content to sit at X Y Z position too long. They don't seem to be hungry enough for me in the what I'm looking to hire. So, I think in both of the these scenarios, most of the time, the expectations of the manager are, are unrealistic. It's a personal style. It's something that they latched on to when interviewing um, versus the organization's uh, perspective as a whole. Mm -hmm. And probably also the, it doesn't realistically represent the situation, right? And what it's just something the manager has, has you know, does, right? And so I can't say, here's where I struggle with the advice. I can't say, wow, you know, answer this way. Always say that you want to stay yeah. forever or always say that you're looking to, you know, you're really ambitious and you want to move up because it's not going to serve you well. So the best I can, the advice I can give there is just to be honest and, and genuine in that answer. Now that should always be the case, but there's a little gamesmanship when it comes to interviewing and building a resume um, and, and all that, we, we know that, right. You, you have to try to find an advantage for yourself. And just like the, the, the dating app pictures, you don't want to <laughs> on your resume, put what you look like in the morning. If you're, you, know, you, you want to put your best foot forward. So mo bo more than one thing is true here, but be honest about your ambition. So then you don't find out after the fact, Hey, there's nowhere for you to advance, um, too late, you know, to have that discussion now. And, and Pete, I'm about to throw something out here left field. Um, I'm a huge fan of a show called Sons of Anarchy. And for those of you who don't know, that is a show about a fictitious town in California where this motorcycle club just runs rampant all over that, that place. There was this one line said in that show that resonated with me. And this is 10 years later. And the line was, 
always tell the truth regardless what happens out of it and what's supposed to ha and what happens the negative things that happens after you tell the truth that's what's supposed to happen right and that stuck with me for a long time and i use that in interviews i use that everywhere because if a candidate says look i don't want to move up. i want to go to school and the organization says well i'm not going to hire you that's not the job for you Right. That's not the job for you then, because if you lie and you do that and you decide to go to grad school and the next thing you know, you're going to have issues with scheduling later on. Right. You might as well start off on the right foot with an organization who your your values resonate with theirs and vice versa. That's the best thing. I Sons of Anarchy. Great show. FX. So, so let me just <laughs> add on to that and you see if you disagree with this. Always okay. be honest, but don't be unnecessarily, uh, you know, uh, don't unnecessarily put out information that may be limiting. Agreed. If, if you're planning to go to grad school, I see. I don't think that's your ex. That's your, you're not obligated to. I don't think you should feel that way. I, I don't. Uh, where it's unrealistic to think. I'm. I should know the statistics on this. I don't off the top of my head. How many times people change jobs in their careers? What the average tenure is? But it job change is frequent. If I had to estimate, I would say people change jobs in their professional career probably 10 times on average. Um, and yeah. that could be low. Yeah. I don't think it's yeah. high. Yeah. It's not high by much, if so. Yeah. Um, but my point is, you're not, the odds are you're not going to stay forever. I mean, that's, that's, we want to go in, you know, hoping for the best, but you don't have to say, oh, by the way, Last thing, as you're walking out of the door, I plan to leave here in, in three years. Don't volunteer that information because no. <laughs> you, you may, you, you know, so even though you should answer honestly, if asked directly, don't go out of your way to um, to interject something that uh, is just going to limit your, your ability to get the job. If asked, don't lie. If not asked, don't tell. There you go. There you go. Oh, I should run for president. That, well, <laughs> you said don't lie. So I don't know. I don't know. If you're I mean, qualified, touche, you're touche. automatically out. Um, so the next one on the list is if you see your company having a series of layoffs. Now, I, I'm i not so sure about this one. While that's something to pay attention to. That was tough, man. Is because companies go through layoffs for so many reasons. As you know, as an HR professional, there's legal reasons that you may declare a layoff, right? That have, that are just a way of cleaning house, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It's the best thing the organization could do from a health and, and, and wellness standpoint for the, the benefits, the current employees. So you can't just on the surface say, wow, they're going through layoffs. I need to leave on the other hand. And I've been part of this where there's signs that the company is just going in the wrong direction without a plan. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. So you may want to look, you should always be looking out for yourself and, 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 you know, planning mm -hmm. ahead. Yep. Agreed. Is that a red flag or a reason to start taking action? It's worth paying attention to at the very least, I think. I'm on the fence, Pete. I'm on the fence because we started this show talking about if your work isn't recognized, that's a sign that, that you should leave. But let me tell you, if you're considering leaving because your organization has just had a series of layoffs, think about what that says about your work ethic. If you survive the layoff, that means your work is being recognized. If you survive the layoff, that means you are valuable to the organization, right? Now, nobody knows how bad it's going to get because it's going to be a, a point where no matter how valuable your position is, if the organization's got to cut, the organization's got to cut. But I feel weird about that one because I think if you survive the layoff, that is in or that is the organization's way of inadvertently telling you you're valuable. Yes, Right now. <laughs> and it's and it's it's natural for people to worry. Um, I think the bigger the company, the farther away you are from where the decision's made. You don't have you know great clarity on why it's being done. And so I recommend ask. I'm a big believer in ask where you stand all the time. You, mm -hmm. everyone has a right to do that and deserves an answer to it. Um I have probably shared this before, but one of the surprising things to me as a business owner for the past two decades is how infrequently people will come and clarify things the, the where I don't find out until too late to do anything about it. Someone misinterpreted something or heard something that bothered them. Well, I want to know. I, I want to know if you're worried or concerned. 
I will always have an answer to, to that. It may not be the answer the individual wants to hear, but I'll always give the answer. Yep. And I want the opportunity to know what's bothering an, you know, any employee that, that's right. that we have. So that's, I don't, I don't know if that's universal, but I think you should don't worry on, and wonder in, mm-hmm. in you know, water cooler talk, so to speak, go to the source, go to your manager and say, I'm concerned about this. Should I be right? Uh, it, yep. Put it out there. And, and look, do, do what I did with my team back in the day when my team got laid off over in Sears, they were not surprised. Why? Cause after every layoff we survived, I'm like, guys don't celebrate. We could be next, next time. Always have a plan B come in, do the job to the best of your ability. But at the same time, exactly like you said, you have to look out for yourself. Always have a plan B in case this boot drops and it did smooth transition smooth. All right. So next up, I'm going to combine right. two. Okay. Toxic work environment. Love that word. Mm. And that it's affecting your mental health, right? You're, you're, the stress is too much. Your mental health is declining. So what toxic work environment. Okay. So here, here's, here's, I have to define toxic work environment because a toxic work environment in an office is radically different than a toxic work environment in a construction site. I have a client that, let me tell you, when I go in and see these guys at the construction site, I'm like, wow, I didn't hear that in the Marine Corps, <laughs> right? But they get along. That is their environment. To me, a toxic work environment is only defined if the environment in which everybody thrives don't thrive. That's what a, to- what a, toxic, vi- a toxic work environment for one place is very different than another. So let's talk about a, a work environment. If you have a manager that's constantly yelling, you have a manager that's constantly putting people down, it doesn't have to be a manager. It could be an employee. It could be a coworker where you go home at night and your chest is hurting. I've had that happen, Pete. I've had that happen a long time ago. I come home, I was in my early 30s. And I'm like, am I really about to have a heart attack? And it wasn't because of the taco I had earlier. It's because of what's happening at work. It, it's that if you, if your mental health is suffering, if your relationship at home is suffering because of what's happening at work, it is definitely time to jump ship. Definitely. It's a, this is also very personal and mm-hmm. subjective to say the yep. least. Yeah. The definition of toxic work environment, we could talk for hours about, about that because what, I consider to be normal work environment today in many cases is it would be labeled uh, toxic uh, by a, a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Also uh, is, is beginning football season, which means hard knocks is on, is on TV. They're doing you like that too. They're doing the green Bay jets issue, uh, green Bay jets. Oh my God. Oh, what? Well, I mean, York kind jets. of the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which right. Aaron Rodgers you know, formerly <laughs> of the green Bay Packers is now a jet, a New York jet, of course. <laughs> And if you watch the, the, that show, right, they're using language or talking to each other in a way that, you know, to your point earlier about the construction site would not apply in a, you know, be okay in a regular office environment. And that's okay there. And no one's getting upset, right? Yeah. Everyone's expecting it. Um, it's part of the culture. So I struggle with, with, with this defining, and I don't want to try to define it because it's, it's just such a personal thing. But like you said, if if your job is affecting you outside of the office mentally, emotionally, you know, um, if physically, then it's a bad situation for you. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a bad situation, I think that's what I want to separate. Just because it's bad for you doesn't mean it's bad. And that is probably more you know, a societal you know, scenario that we have going on right now where just because something doesn't work out, it, it doesn't mean someone was in the wrong, right? It doesn't mean that you have to blame, don't blame your employer for being who they are. And you know, <laughs> that's great. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, it's true. You know, and I've, I've been, I've experienced that, right. I've experienced on glass door, you know, a uh, you know, former employee and, 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 you know, one of our um, offices in another city, we don't have any more like, they made us work these hours and this, <laughs> and they, they constantly were trying to get us to produce. How dare they? Like, <laughs> like literally the, the complaint on glass door was our job description <laughs> effectively. And I'm like, <laughs> I love it. It's, it's, and that's just more about the author than anything else. Right. But, but, but it was, 
you know, the takeaway from that, and it's look, it's no fun being, you know, getting those kind of reviews, mm. even as unwarranted as it might be, because that's the reality of that individual. And that's okay. You know, for them, they should leave, they should move on, but it doesn't mean the situation was bad. So just know that. And, and I'll just use this as an opportunity to say, when you do, if you do depart because of, for those reasons, right, you're, and I've been there too. I've been in a situation where I dreaded going into work on Monday. Yes, that's, that is something to move on from. That's right. It doesn't mean with, with the, the one situation that I come up with, I mean, it's happened to me once in, in my career, really, really blatantly. Um, I inherited a manager that, uh, which is usually when these things kind of happen, mm -hmm. not someone that hired me, not someone I agreed to, to go work for. It just situationally, as, as, as I moved within the organization, this person came in, was hired above me. Um, not a good fit. Not a good fit. And I, for years, was blamed the individual, right? But but then I realized it was my fault. That, that mm -hmm. even though I thought I knew better at the time, and perhaps I did, this person was in charge. My job, you know, reporting to them was to make sure they were happy with my performance. I chose to take a different approach. And so it became toxic by any, like, definite, it was an awful relationship. But that was, I still have to take responsibility for it. Yeah. And so I, the day I left, I didn't feel that way. For a year after, I didn't feel that way. It's been yeah, it a takes long time, time now. And I can look <laughs> back and go, I get it. That was me. Yeah. Right. And so I've been better on the other side of it, but just know that if you're in a bad situation, you should consider moving on if it's, if it's really affecting you um, outside of work. Can I say something real quick about that? Because you said something really important that I want the audience to really hone in on folks. Did you realize what he just did? Self-reflection. That's important in these situations, in these situations, if you're not jiving with somebody, if you're not, if you're not um, really, uh, re really, you know, being efficient or working with somebody, take a step back. And I'm not being funny here. Are you the problem? Is the problem you? You try to check those boxes out first before you keep approaching it, right? For you, Pete, it took a long time. To me, sometimes I, I notice it an instant. Sometimes I notice it five years later, right? That it was me, right? So that I I I you know I just don't want to move on from this particular piece without saying you have to take a self-reflection and see if you are adding to this issue. And if you remove yourself or things are going to be instantly be better. It, you posted something the other day that was really profound and I'm surprised it didn't get as many traction as it did. You said something to the effect Effect. Could you imagine just for the slightest second, if you're the one that's wrong? How did that quote go? You put it on there, and it and it was perfect. You put you know, it on. It was it was because it was on Twitter where uh, you know okay. I, I don't have a lot of interaction. But the um, that was a conversation I had with my kids. It's it's we, we all are quick to um, to judge. I think whether we try to be or well, some are better than others, right? I'm a, I'm at times quick to judge. So it could be something like, you know, you're in traffic and so you perceive that someone cuts you off and you're, you're upset at that individual. Well, they have their own perspective on that. Right. Yep. And if you just assume that you're, you're right always, I think that's a dangerous you know, path to go down. And, and you, if you just apply that in every scenario, Hey, what if I'm wrong? Let me consider the possibility that I'm the one not wrong about, Hey, this is blue or green, or there's four of those clearly and not two. What if I'm in the wrong? What if my perspective is 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 uh, is skewed on this one, and I'm being unjust in the way I'm looking at at, at this situation? Um, just think how everything would be different, right? And, more and, people need to do that. It's more people oh, need to do that. Problem. Right? I mean, I certainly need to do it. Yeah. And and so <laughs> it's one of those things where I said it to my kids. I'm like, well. I better, uh, they're looking at me. So I need to try to do that too. So that, that was where it came from. Excellent. Well, I mean, I thought, I thought it was, it was perfect. I'm like, right. We're so amped up to show our position. We don't take a step back. To even think about if we're the ones adding fuel to the fire. So I, I just thought that was good. And, and it's, this is hard. It, it, some, some are much better than others at doing it in the moment. And, and especially with something like work, I mean, you, everyone goes into a new, career opportunity hopeful and expecting that it's going to be good, right? The honeymoon period, if you will. And uh, why am I on like this relationship kick today? Everything's about <laughs> because it is right. It is, or it's, a, it's, 
where you spend your waking hours, you know, the relationship you have with your employer and, and employees is 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 an intimate one uh, in many cases, right? You're, you're so tied together, but um, we all want it to work out on the front end, but the odds show that it's not going to ultimately work out, right? You leave every job except one. That's a, the definitive truth, just like a relationship. Mm. Every relationship you're in is going to end except for one, right? And so- if you go into that, just not looking to, or you leave not looking to blame, but to learn, that is ah, the healthy way to do it. But so hard in the moment. That's right. So hard. <laughs> it's really easy to look back, right? <laughs> look back. Well, it's it's easy to sit behind a microphone and say it when right? you're not <laughs> having to be accountable to anyone or anything, and you're not having to back it up. But uh, no, speaking yeah. of speaking of which, it, it's it's I got I have an issue with something on this list. Right. Because let's say all these things are happening. Let's say, you know, your your job is not being recognized. You know, it's a toxic work environment. If you made a constant decision, you know what? I need to leave. Right. One of the things on here that I think you and I might disagree on, if you make if you make sure you leave the job at the right time, because you have to know when to leave, depends how bad things are. And you just say, I'm going to leave. There's a point here that says, don't leave without another opportunity lined up. I don't know if that's true today as it was 10 years ago. Because right now, Pete, if I'm upset at something, right? And I'm like, you know what? I don't have time to interview. Let me just leave. And I, and, and you and I have talked about this before. Um, I can make $600 this week and easily on Uber, Lyft all these things to carry me over until I have another job. But I think people right now have an out before having something else lined up to hold them through. And the reason I, I, I'm, I'm big on this is I talk to every Lyft or Uber driver that I take, and I travel quite a bit. I just got back from Puerto Rico on Monday night, and I was talking to the Uber driver, and he he's a perfect example. Guy from Venezuela, been here for 20 years. He hated his job. He quit. He's trying to find something else, and he's doing this in the meantime. He makes almost 80% doing Uber <laughs> than what he was making at his real job, so he's just taking a 20% cut for him to find some sanity. What do you say about that? So I would... I would say that universally is is not something I would recommend, but also these individuals who go into that uh, you know, uh, you know, gig work, that is having a plan and something to go to. So I, I just want to you know, clarify enough. that okay. yeah. where the plan may not be that next great job lined up, uh, the, 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 the career move that you hope you know, is indefinite, right? That, that that offers everything you're looking for, but they still sound like they had a plan versus quitting out of emotion and not knowing what's coming next. I don't support that because there's so many factors beyond your control and you really need to know your marketability and you know, what your options are. Right. And there's a lot of people looking for a job right now, more so than there has been than, um, you know, since during COVID, but I, I don't even, that, that was such an abnormal time in the mm. job market. You almost can put that aside, right? We know that was just not a, you know, a normal situation. But if I look back on how things, I'm going to say, feel right now compared to the, the 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 25 years I've been paying attention to these things, it doesn't feel good right now to be unemployed. Mm. It, it doesn't feel good right now to be, I, I don't think this is a great time to be on the market. Um, there are things you can do to increase the odds in your favor. Different show. We've talked about that. Mm -hmm. But eh, leaving, you know, without a, a plan, proceed with it's talk. scary. No, I get it. It's scary. Sometimes people do that. I've had employees that that they left just because, you know, they wanted that extra, which didn't make sense to me, honestly. Now, this is before Uber. Um, I had an employee come to me and say she was really frustrated because she could not get promoted to the next stop. And I told her, I'm like, well, that's mine. <laughs> Right. Unless I quit, get hit by a bus or hit the lotto, that's not going to happen or get fired. That's right. not going to happen. Right. But then she just said, you know what, then I'm just going to go get something else. Or, do you have something else locked on? Because she was a good employee. She was really good. I'm like, do you have something else? Because I can help her. No. Nope. And she just left. That never made sense to me. It, it, it's, it's because she, 
she was concerned or comp uh, com um, or complaining because she could not get a promotion and go to the next step. And her answer to that is go to zero dollars an hour. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I think it's hard to find a if you do if you if you conduct a job search properly, it can be a full time job if you do it thoroughly. It it, mm -hmm. it it can take a lot of time and effort, but once again, there's ways to circumvent that. There's ways to shortcut that. Uh, working with third party staffing companies, making sure your uh, digital uh, presence is maximized. There's so many things you can do while you're still employed, but there's other there's scenarios that exist where it's just impractical to fully look for the right job if you're, you're depending on the hours you work and in, in, in the situation. So everything is so unique, but have a plan, think it out. Don't, yeah. don't go ready, fire, aim in that scenario. <laughs> that, that's Peter's, scary. right? Huh? Yeah. That's uh, Tom Peters. That's his, uh, his, uh, the, the great author ready, fire, aim. Yeah. I actually like that. It, it's just, it's, <laughs> That is not how you should approach your your career. I agree. Especially I agree. when what we're talking about is you've decided that you need to uh, make a move because the situation you're in is not um, is not in aligned with your goals. Is not leading towards your goals and, and whatever those may be, so personal and unique. Um, but don't act out of emotion. Don't don't act. Well, maybe. Well, hold on now because you're saying don't act out of emotion, but. What if your instinct tells you you should leave? Shouldn't you trust your instincts? Well, we'll quantify that, right? What What does that mean? What What? what okay, all right. I saw to work today. I see my boss. I'm like, God, I can't stand that guy. I I'm done. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> right? Yeah. Something yep. tells me in my stomach I need to leave today. I need to resign today. That's that's a that makes no sense <laughs> and sense to me, right? You just get you just, you just have a feeling today is the day. That's okay. Good luck. I mean, well, one of the lists here says trust your instincts. Trust your instincts, sure, but don't. That doesn't mean you act immediately, right? Those are they separate those. Just because, like, you know, your instinct may be telling you that you need to make a move. So my recommendation there is understand where that's coming from, right? That doesn't just. Uh, you know, is, is it a bad vibe? Is it, you know, can you, can you put your arms around why you're feeling that way? Deal with that first. But let's say you can't, right? Let's say you're like, I, I can't articulate why I feel this way. I just do when it's not going away, it's growing because we all, we all have bad days, by the way. I mean, your scenario, and I know you're just throwing it out there, but I walk in this morning and I go, I don't like the look of my boss. I'm leaving. Right. <laughs> don't like do a Star that. Star Trek fan. No, don't do that. It, 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 we all have bad situations. Assess it, you know, step back for a moment. Don't act on emotion in that scenario. So I'm going to, I'm going to double down on what I said. But if you, if the feeling is not going away, even if you don't, you don't have to justify it to anyone else. It's personal. Put together a plan on what happens next. You, 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 you don't play with this loosely, depending on the obligations that you have, the responsibilities that you're committed to, other people you're accountable for, whatever it might be, right? There's a very, very big difference in, a um, you know someone who's in a um, who doesn't have many bills to pay or is independently wealthy versus someone who is the sole provider for a family and lives paycheck to paycheck. You sometimes you have to suck it up because of your personal uh, situation. You are responsible for your own results ultimately, and so I I caution the hey act on emotion. <laughs> so that's. that's mm. That's, that's where I was trying to to get to because your instincts would tell you if the job is not right for you, but it should not be the indicator for you to jump ship. That just means start planning, start planning. Yeah, because right now, if you said right now, I'm not, you know, I can't stand this job. I'm going to jump ship. Not a good time. The market is not great right now. Do you know how many people are out there right now involuntarily looking for a job? Because of layoffs, consider the job market. So what this means is have a strategy, have a plan, and know when to strike. And let your employer, give your employer some time. Don't just show up one day and say, I'm leaving today. I'm, I'm going to give you my two-minute notice. That's yeah. never going to go Don't well. Do Don't do that. <laughs> never well, going to go well. The, we've talked about that a lot, right? Yeah, Don't. we have. Just give them enough time, at least two weeks, right? Depending on your on your position, I'm talking to somebody right now, and this person has been for this organization for 25 years. And this person I'm talking to right now, she is in a really bad spot because if she leaves right now, the organization goes under. And I told her, you give them a three-month notice. 
three month note and let them know by this day I'm gone. Now she can say that, right? Because they're not going to fire her. They need her, right? I, but that's plenty of time for the organization to set up a contingency plan for when she leaves. Now, Ricky, people will hear that and say the employer doesn't deserve that. Why should you do that for them? Well, you know, I can understand why people say that because the because if you was to what's the famous saying, if you was to die, they would your if you was to die, your position will be a posted before your 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 obituary will. Mm. I mean, that's true. I mean, it'll be it will be naive of naive of me to think that the organization is going to wait three months, right? <laughs> For me, <laughs> after my death, that's not going to happen, right? But here's what I'm telling you. The organization may not deserve it, but your business partners do. The people you work with do. The boss who you get along with do. They deserve it. Forget the organization. Focus on the people who you've worked with for the past 25 years who deserve that kind of time. That's what you want to focus on. That's that's a good way to put it. I, I, I like that. Um, and these are things that you're not going to see there's no, there's no guidebook on that. It's, it just comes down to doing, doing the right thing. So that's an area where you should trust your instinct, you know, in particular, right? Uh, it, does this feel right? Yeah. And now, now again, I told her three months just because of her position, sure. a regular position, two weeks, give them two weeks, guys, let them know, right? Even if you don't think they deserve it, that's fine. You got some people out there who don't deserve to go through all that turmoil because you decided to jump ship early. Yes. Right? And, and that's what you got to think about. So that's a great point. So, so but, but you're, there's, what about reasons not to leave? Let's, let's knock out some of these real quick before we wrap up. Oh, I'll tell you that. I can tell you this right now. I, 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 if you have an amazing boss, if you have an amazing team, if you have an amazing business partners, you're not going to leave. I'm an example of that, Pete. I'm an example. I worked at Sears Home Improvement for, I thought I was going to work there for six months. I worked there for seven years. Why? That three three legged stool was real. My boss was awesome. My I had an amazing team and business partners who really cared about HR and they really listened. I stayed there for seven years, getting paid thirty percent less of what I was uh, worth. And the reason I was okay with that: a, I lived below my means, and b, I value that work environment more than thirty percent more of my paycheck. That's now great. I'm I'm at a place in my career where I can't do that. I understand there's some people, exactly how you said earlier, who live paycheck to paycheck, they're the sole breadwinner of their family, who as much as they want to do that, they cannot do that. So I understand that. It depends on what you value. So if what you value is alive and well in that organization, that is a great reason to stay. <laughs> right. It depends on on what you value in life. You value flexibility, you're getting it, stay, right? You value a great relationship with your people, stay, right? Uh, well, and we know that bad things will happen eventually in, you know, in every situation. If you're there for seven years, it's not all gonna be rosy, we know that. Um, so don't leave just because you make a mistake. In fact, I, I think that's a reason to, uh, uh, to to stay and prove that you can uh, get on the other side of that, right? Don't leave because you were passed over for a promotion, right? Same thing. Use that as an opportunity. It hurts though. There's a reason. It hurts. Well, yeah, it's not fun, <laughs> yeah. but but why? Why did that happen? Ask the question. No reflection. The answer because well, Ricky, you know, you know Jane was Star a Wars fan. former than you were, right? <laughs> yeah, she's, she's a Star Wars. She's a Star Trek fan. <laughs> and then you decide whether. That, that, that you can overcome that, but yeah. don't leave just because bad things happen um, or you, 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 something comes up once, right. The, it, or because you have to, it's going to, ha it's inevitable. It's inevitable. Yeah. It, 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 you know, the best way, you know, what's the best way to decide whether you have a great organization to work with. If, you see it about to hit the fan and you know you've got some turmoil coming down the uh, the pike that you have no worries. The people you get to your left and to your right, you have no worries. You're going to come over good on the other side with the folks you got. That's when you know you should stay. Right. Absolutely. Everything's golden when it's nice and peachy. The true colors come out when things do not go according to plan. The true colors come out when the organization has a bumpy route and the organ the, the team that sticks together in that process. Just do you know 
when you got people who served in the military, they've seen a lot of nasty stuff together. Then they come out, they have a better relationship with each other than the people that they grew up with. Right. Because people who go through misery, people who go through all those hard times together, that builds bonds and it builds relationships. And let me tell you, I've gone a lot through it in, 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 in other situations and it builds bonds. Much, That's more, so. M- much I- more so than when things are just easy and good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, it's th- that, that's it, when things are going well, it's, it's, it seems easy. And you know, so on that point too, I mean, if you are criticized by your boss, that's not a reason to feel compelled to, to leave. Now there's, there's extremes to this, there's yeah. degrees, but criticism is 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 necessary and valuable that's how you evolve and improve right would you rather be in a situation where you you're never going to be promoted you're you're not valued uh, enough very much in the organization because you're consistently doing something wrong that you don't know is wrong versus your manager saying hey ricky this is what um you know you're you're not doing you know correctly here's here's a way to improve it here's the path to getting past it and of course you want to be armed with that. Now, the way I presented it right in this moment seems different than reality maybe, you know, cause that, that message sometimes could be you know, um, shared in a not so kind way. So you mm-hmm. have to you know, consider that too, but you need feedback in order to, to grow and evolve. Right. And the person willing to give it is usually someone who's has your best interest. They may have their own interests in mind too. That's okay. I mean, that's the nature of the the employee employer relationship, but they're telling you for your own benefit as, as well, because the alternative is, is not helping. Anyone. <laughs> you know, what's more important than, than giving feedback, receiving it, mm. you yeah. have to be able to receive it. Right. And you know what, if you receive feedback, sometimes it's going to be great. That's awesome. What you really need to pay attention is how you're going to react when it's not good feedback. Right. Because you're right. The reason you're getting fee- if the person did not care about you, they're not going to give you the feedback. If they care about your 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 performance at work. And obviously, if the person reports to you, then their their neck is on the line as well. Right. So there is they have an incentive to give you some constructive feedback. Folks, you have to be able to take the feedback. You're not perfect. Your boss isn't perfect as much as he or she tries to look like one. You have to be able to take that feedback, take it with stride. And and here's the thing. Even if it's feedback you don't deserve, don't get emotional with it. Ask for clarification. There could be a complete misunderstanding on the objectives, but sometimes people go off on tangents and pay feedback they don't understand instead of asking for clarification. So open those lines of communication. There's a scenario that comes to mind when you, when you say that uh, with a, an employee, a current employee, so I'm not going to share too many details, who was uh, received feedback that was unfounded uh, by someone who was no longer associated with our organization. It was off base, um, but at the time it was meaningful. It was it, it it was the reality of the moment, the the feedback, and um, the employee who received the feedback said, "I don't I don't get this. I don't I don't think this is this is warranted." You know, I think you know what I'm talking about. And uh, and I was sort of independent of it. I was involved, but not directly. And what I said was, "Then prove prove that right. Overcome it." Don't, you know, don't take it. You have to, you have to absorb it for what it is. Now go prove that it was wrong. Yep. Very few people do that. I think it is really hard to do them. I mean, this was, this was an intense situation. Um, turned out to be the, the, the best thing. I wish it hadn't happened, of course, but I would make a case that it made this individual so much better um, and should be so much more confident on the other side of it and prove to be the other person was blatantly wrong. Um, and it was just the, it was, it was a very good ending to a scenario. So absorb it, learn from it and then, and then grow and, and, and improve what, whatever that means. And, and then, you know, if you decide after doing that, that you conclude that it's not going to matter that you're, you're, the, the feedback is, you know, is just never going to improve that you're never going to be treated fairly. Well, then you have to make your own decision, right? But on the surface, feedback 
is, you know, tells you where you're st you stand and gives you the opportunity to do something about it. It's very valuable. And for everybody listening to this right now, just, 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 just digest what Peach has said, right? If you are given feedback that you do not agree with, do not get defensive. Ask for clarification. Help me understand why we came to that conclusion, because you want to be inquisitive, not defensive. OK, if you become defensive, it takes the conversation to a completely different place. There's a good chance the boss is wrong. There's also a good chance the boss is right. This is the time to have a conversation. And when your boss tells you, you know what? OK, I wasn't there. Prove them wrong. Take that opportunity as the it, it's look, you're right on the goal line. The game is almost over. You got to cross to that touchdown and the game is over. That's what you need to do. Take that information and then prove them wrong. Because look, in this situation, Pete, aren't you glad that happened now? Right? Because he was able to get more clarification from that person or no? <laughs> I, I'm, I, yes and no, because the, the yes is on the other side of it. I'm glad how it ended up, but mm -hmm. I wish I hadn't let it happen in the first place. Um, got it. I got it. But, I, you know, but it, it was a, I, I wasn't, because I wasn't firsthand involved, you know, I had to let it, let it play out to some degree. So, um, again, that, that's, it's, I don't want to share too many details of it, but I'm, I'm certainly, uh, you know, thankful that it ended up the way it did. Right. So, uh, the right so, person won. <laughs> so, <laughs> so all this is happening, Pete, all this is happening. I hate my boss. I hate my job. I, 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 you know, you're telling me I need a plan, right? I shouldn't just trust my instinct and quit right away, yep. but you're telling me to have a plan, right? What does that plan look like? So you, you, you need to know what's coming on the other side, right? As best you can. So how, how do we do that while, while, while you're employed? Well, it starts with updating your resume. That, that, okay. That's a given. Uh, make sure you're active on LinkedIn. That's the place where recruiters find people. So go there. It's, it's, I always think of it as a free resume that you can post without having to look over your shoulder that your employer is going to see it, but also where you can post online. Um, uh, sign up for email alerts. You can go mm -hmm. to um, our sister website, zengig.com um, and sign up for email alerts that will be emailed to your inbox every day of new jobs that, that match what you're looking for. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know, certifications, continued learning. You can do all of those things to improve yourself. So there's short-term plans and long-term plans. Uh, you can hire a career coach. That That is an, a, a, a potentially valuable thing to do. Get in touch with staffing companies who work in your industry, in your market, in your specialty, whatever it might be. So there's a lot of things that, that you can do. We have, of course, uh, no shortage of blogs uh, and, and articles on, on that. So, so check them out. We'll link them in the show notes. But um, it's all about taking action. Action, action, action. Don't sit back and wait. Be proactive. Take ownership of your own career and your success. And folks, it's good that you have an advocate in your corner but never rely on an advocate in your corner. You should always, always be ready to advocate for yourself. You should always be ready to, to toot your own horn. This is the part that I get from my students a lot, Pete, right? That they're afraid. They seem like it feeds into an ego. They might be egotistic if they talk too much about themselves. And I'd say that's a great concern to have, but the alternate, the byproduct of that is so much more valuable than what you're afraid of. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Yep. Just continue to do it. Continue to do it. That's like saying, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to work out and be healthy, right? And live longer because, you know, Planet Fitness gives free pizza every Tuesday. That's true, by the way. <laughs> so, so I mean, it just doesn't make sense, right? That's a byproduct, right? I see you smiling. You've been to Planet Fitness on Tuesday. I, I just you? know of no, I haven't, but I know okay. I know that's their, their gimmick. It's so a, it's such a weird gimmick. Anyway, so that's what you need to do, folks. Do not be afraid to toot your own horn. Now, if you're starting to ask for feedback, this is when you should self-reflect and ask for feedback. Train your, uh, train yourself, record yourself, right? Giving that 30 second elevator speech, right? See, see how you come across. Give it to your friends and family and see how, well, you know, what they tell you. Now, this was controversial. So follow me here, Pete. Give it to people who, who you generally don't like. Give what? Are we Give about? the recording to people who oh. you generally don't okay. like. Okay. All right. Oh, here's why. Here's why. Here's why. Yes, they're going to dial it up to a 10, but there's going to be some truth in there. 
there's going to be some truth in there that your mom is not going to give you and your spouse is not going to give you, but the person who doesn't like you is going to give you. I've done that before. It has worked wonders because I've gotten some great feedback inadvertently that I did not get from my own friends or family. All right. Well, that, that I would, yeah, you would, I would expect that. So if you really want, if you really want the truth, or, yeah, go, go everybody wants your feelings hurt. Go to people who don't <laughs> and like. they cry with a half gallon of ice cream at Publix. Yeah. Try that. <laughs> All right. So with that in mind, uh, we, I think we have a, we have a plan. So lot, yeah, we do. Lots, of, lots of things to consider when uh, making a decision to leave. And then what comes on the other side of that's just as important. So Ricky, I think uh, we've done it. We've beat the horse. We, this poor horse. Uh, but Pete is going to call us, Pete. <laughs> yeah, probably. They're going to call us. We keep saying that too much. Keep, keep we have those horses out we've there. We've beaten the topic, Pete. Relax. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone, thanks for listening. Uh, drive safe. Have a great rest of your day. Ricky, goodbye for now. Goodbye for now. Have a good one. Have an amazing weekend. See you next week.